Welcome to the Medical Research Council Centre for Regenerative Medicine at the University of Edinburgh. My name is Sophie and I'm a PhD student at the centre. I'm going to give you a tour of the building, which was built in 2011 for scientists and clinicians to study stem cells, disease and tissue repair to advance human health. As you move around the building, you will learn more about our research community, see where our scientists work every day and discover our state-of-the-art facilities. Follow the tour with the arrows and where you see me, click on the link so I can tell you more about each location we visit. This is the reception area. Over by the window is some information about the research that goes on at the centre. If you look around and up, you can see some artwork relating to that research. Click the links to find out more or the arrows to continue the tour. GMP facility. Part of the centre's goal is to translate our research findings into new treatments. These laboratories are kept very clean to allow the growth of human cells which can then be put back into patients. This is known as a good manufacturing practice or GMP facility. This facility is highly controlled to meet regulatory expectations for cell therapy manufacturing in the UK and Europe and has dedicated laboratories for characterising stem cells and safety checks. This facility is managed by the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service and Roslyn Cell Therapies. Now we're on the second floor. The building is designed in a square with each side allocated a different colour, red, yellow, blue or green. Each area includes central laboratory space where each of us has our own bench and separate desk space to read and write up our findings. The seminar room is where we hold our external seminars and events which are open to the public. We also hold internal seminars and lab meetings here where we share our findings. This is my lab meeting, led by Professor Anna Williams. We meet every other week to discuss our latest results and future plans. We always have cake. Professor Sir Ian Wilmot, who led the team that created Dolly the Sheep, was the founding director of the MRC Centre for Regenerative Medicine. He also runs his own research group at the centre. Research takes more than just the scientists. The administrative team support all aspects of the centre, from finance to student support, providing the best possible environment for research to flourish. The centre also houses a small team of dedicated public engagement and communion specialists to share our work with the public. Each colour-coded area consists of desk space, where each scientist has a desk to read, write up their findings and plan their next experiments. This desk space is open plan, with several different research teams sitting together, so it's easy to talk with fellow scientists. You can also see the lab space through the glass walls. Breakout space. An essential part of the tour. This is where we eat lunch, get coffee and chat. You can use it for informal meetings that don't need a full-scale meeting room, or just to catch up. We have our lab benches to ourselves, but there's also a number of communal areas and pieces of equipment we can share. It's always best to ask if it belongs to another lab, though. Some of our samples and cells need to be stored at very low temperatures. This freezer is at minus 80 degrees.
Soil culture room. Growing soils on a dish is central to a lot of the research we do here, and the rooms we do it in are also at the centre of the building. Keeping soils growing in a dish can be a challenge. They need to be fed regularly and everything needs to be kept clean, so we work in these hoods to have a filtered airflow. I'm here with Marilyn, who's part of the core service supporting this facility. When we need to do experiments on a larger scale, there's lots of equipment to help us. For example, instead of pipetting liquids ourselves, these liquid handling robots can speed things up while staying accurate. If you want to learn more about how the experiments here are analysed, go to the High Content Imaging Room. High Content Imaging Room. This lab houses an automated microscope that allows us to image both cells and tissues in plates and on slides. There's also a robot arm which loads and unloads large batches of plates so that we can screen millions of cells for genes that may be important in diseases or screen compounds that could help to cure those diseases. Click on the links to find out more about phenotypic screening. Data analysis. We have a number of shared computers with special data analysis software. All scientists can book time to use these. Plus, down here, facility manager Bertrand is on hand to help. The centre has a fully equipped histology lab. Here we can process cell or tissue samples, slice them very thinly, stain them for different cell structures, then analyse them under a microscope. This is my desk, where I try to make sense of the data I've collected in the lab.
Okay, so that's what the fish look like. What does our fish room itself look like, where the fish live? Well, we have a, a, a few different rooms, but they all follow a quite similar plan. Uh, down the left-hand side, you have lots of racks filled with tanks filled with fish. Down the right-hand side, you have lots of racks filled with tanks filled with fish. Down the middle, you have more racks filled with more tanks filled with more fish. So you get the idea there's a, there's a lot of fish in there. Uh, we have the capacity for, for something around 30,000 fish, uh, but we generally don't run at your maximum capacity, maximum density, so it's, it's usually closer to about 10,000 fish at, at any one time. So how do we support this, this system, this big aquarium? Well, it's, it's a recirculating system, so the water constantly circulates through it and it has to be adjusted and, and cleaned. And uh, you know, It's basically the same as keeping an aquarium at home, but you have to keep much tighter control over it because there are thousands of fish involved. So we have this uh, monitoring system on the wall here that's constantly, sensors in the water, that's constantly reading the, the temperature, the pH, the conductivity, the, the dissolved gas, um, you know, various things, and then adjusting that automatically. So it, it doses in from these big buckets here that contain different salt solutions, and it, and it doses that into the system to keep it at just the right level. Because the fish like uh, mostly fresh water with just a, a little bit of salt. They come from Indian surrounding countries and they live in uh, you know pools and, and rivers and even rice paddies where, where the water is mostly fresh but a, a little bit of salt is, is good. So we have uh, what's basically a swimming pool uh, pump here and when the water flows out of the tanks into the, the sump tanks it then gets pumped through this, this big pump and it pushes it through these filter cylinders and inside these filter cylinders are essentially big socks, like big Christmas stockings uh, filters and uh, the first one is it just takes the material out of the water so uh, Un uneaten fish food, uh, any detritus in the water, a lot of fish poop really, um, and that gets forced through the sock and the sock catches that. And then the second sock, this big sort of Christmas stocking thing, is filled with carbon and uh, that, that carbon it takes the chemicals out of the water. So uh, because we're, we're constantly dealing with these, these stockings filled with carbon every day in the fish room is, is, is a failed Christmas. Um, and after going through these, it goes into the UV reactor at the top, which is essentially just a, a lot of very strong uh, UV light sources, which then sterilise the water and kill the pathogens that might be in it. And then it goes back round to the, the tanks and the cycle starts again. So that's the equipment that supports the main aquarium itself. But, uh, what else do we use? Well, we, we use an incubator, which is just essentially a, a, a slightly warm oven and that keeps the, the embryos at 20 and a half degrees. So when we get the eggs, they go in dishes or tanks in the incubator and they're kept at 20 and a half degrees, which is the perfect temperature for them to develop. Uh, then we also have our, our Timia uh, hatcheries here. So this is part of what we feed the fish. So uh, part of their diet is, is fish food, just dry fish food like you would feed your fish at home. But the other part of their diet is this live food, this, these are Artemia. So these are, uh, if you know sea monkeys, the, the sort of pets you can get for kids. And that's these are the cousins of, of sea monkeys. So you get the cysts. And I mean, these are really interesting in themselves. You get the cysts, which are sort of like the eggs. And they come as dry powder. And you add them to the salt water and they hatch out and they you know, burst into life and they swim around for a couple of days and then we feed them to the fish. And the fish love eating live prey. The zebrafish is very uh, sort of visual hunter. They, they use their sight, they use their smell, they, they like tracking their prey. And they have really big eyes. Their eyes are like a third the size of their brain. Um, so th this is a, a real sort of environmental enrichment, a, a stimulation for them to, to, to hunt down these Artemia and, and eat them up. Um, but as I say, even the Artemia themselves are, are interesting because the, the cysts that they come from can dry out and, and remain in the, in the, the soil, the, the silt, for a hundred years. And, uh, and then you add the water and they, they immediately burst back into life. So what else will we have in the fish room? So the you know, tools of trade are nets. Uh, lots of nets <laughs> when you're moving a, a lot of fish around. Uh, buckets. Uh, so a, a fish facility is one of the few sort of lab environments where you will see a bucket. Um, and other sorts of mops and buckets. Because a, a, a fish room is, is one of the few lab environments where, you're, where you are going to get wet. So it's uh, sort of like the, the first 10 rows at SeaWorld, you, you will get wet. 
So that's uh, the, the facility. So what sort of areas of research? And why are we why are we keeping these fish? What are we actually using them for? Well, two of the big areas are, are development and, and genetics. So the, the zebrafish genome has was sequenced a while ago, and uh, you know people use it to, to study genetics and development because of all the properties that I've listed about the rapid development and, and ease of access to them. But it covers a whole range of, of, of other topics, you know, subtopics. And uh, here at the, the, the HCU, people are studying a variety of things using zebrafish. So things like eye development, uh, things like general uh, development, uh, you know, trying to, to find out why changes in people's genetics cause uh, people to, to, to be much smaller than, than would be average for a human and, what, and how those genetic changes do that. Um, other things are such as studying uh, cancer. So we have we have fish that, that develop uh, particular types of skin cancer, and then uh, that skin cancer re regresses, and we're trying to study that to to understand human skin cancer. Um, other things such as very early development. So originally, uh, when when eggs first start to develop. <clears throat> All of their sort of machinery that they're using comes from the mother that was put inside the egg, uh, but then at a certain point a switch happens and the, the the egg has to the fertilized embryo has to start making its own you know proteins and, and DNA and things like that and uh, some people are, are studying that early switch when that occurs. Welcome to the Chancellor's Building. The Chancellor's Building was opened by His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh, Chancellor of the University of Edinburgh, on the 12th of August 2002. The University's new medical school building provides a modern academic space for teaching and research, with two large lecture theatres and a medical library, together with research laboratories. This is the entrance to the Jax Blake Suite, a breakout area and cafe for students and staff to relax. This is the entrance to one of our lecture theatres, and this is the reception desk. Up the stairs is access to the first floor, which contains more research areas, and then the second floor, which is home to our professional services staff. This is another view of the foyer. On these seats, in between lectures, you'll often find medical students waiting for their next tutorial. You also have a view of some of the upper floors. You also have a view of the famous tapestry by Alan Davy entitled To a Celtic Spirit. Welcome to the Queen's Medical Research Institute, or QMRI. QMRI is a world-class clinical research facility and has four strategic centres addressing major disease challenges. This is the reception area on the ground floor. These doors lead to our labs and other research areas. These doors lead to the main lecture theatre in the building. And if we travel up these stairs, we'll go and visit the cafe.
Welcome to our cafe at QMRI, which is called The Drum. As you can see, The Drum provides a great space for staff and students to relax and get their lunch. You can also hold informal meetings here. Here at The Drum, we offer a wide selection of homemade soups, main courses and snacks. There's fresh paninis and baguettes, which can be made to order. There's also daily vegetarian choices, and the cafe operates a monthly cycle of healthy options. Coffee, tea, hot chocolate and a good selection of hot drinks are also available. This is the Flow Cytometry Facility at QMRI. Flow Cytometry is a technology used to measure different parameters or characteristics of cells or particles flowing in suspension past a sensing point, whereby the laser interacts the stream and the emitted signal is collected by detectors for real-time analysis. Fluorescent tags for intra- or extracellular markers can be added to these particles to further define subpopulations. Fluorescent tags for intra- or extracellular markers can be added to these particles to further define subpopulations. The QMRI Flow Cytometry Facility is hosted by the Centre for Inflammation Research and is located in C2.35 and C2.36 in the Queen's Medical Research Institute. As well as four flow cytometry analyzers, including Scotland's only academic-based spectral flow cytometer, the facility also houses three cell sorters which can separate and purify populations of interest for downstream applications, such as functional assays, or genomic and transcriptomic analyses. The Roslyn Institute building opened in 2011 when Institute staff and students moved from a site on the edge of Roslyn Village to the Easter Bush campus. The eye-catching building houses three floors of research laboratories and office space, including state-of-the-art facilities for bioimaging, genomics, infectious disease research and genetic engineering. The footprint of the building is long and narrow, with two arms at each end representing a chromosome. This reflects the expertise in animal genetics at the Institute since its origins in the University of Edinburgh's Institute of Animal Genetics, founded in 1919. For many years, the Roslyn Institute and its precursors were known for their work in poultry and animal breeding, but the Institute was made famous by the birth of Dolly the Sheep in 1996 the world's first mammal to be cloned from an adult cell. Since then, the Roslyn Institute has continued to innovate and its facilities, staff and students have enabled it to cement its position as a world leader in animal bioscience, enhancing the lives of animals and humans. We'll now take you for a virtual tour of the Roslyn Institute. 